Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for tuning in once again to Mama Sanity. Um, yes, I know it's Wednesday. Usually I do it on a Monday or Friday. Um, but I just, for some reason, I just really felt like it's the middle of the week and a lot of people are maybe struggling. And so I just felt like I needed to share this with you um, today. I was going to do it tomorrow because Friday my kids have um, field day, so I'm going to be participating in that. But like I said, um, I've been watching a lot of um, Pastor Stephen Ferdnick, I think is how you pronounce his name, on YouTube. Awesome, awesome. Um, I've been watching him like several videos a day, and he's kind of, you know, giving me that push to um, do it today. So um, I have more inspirational stories for you from um, from YouTube, or not from YouTube, sorry, from Pinterest. Um, and these will kind of, like last week, they were kind of, um, you know, there still are good people in the world. This is a little bit like that, but it's leaning more toward judgment and suicide. Um, I want to talk to y'all today a little about um, suicide um, because it is, I feel it's a, um, it's a big issue in our world today. It always has been a big issue, but it's, a lot easier now and, and it's a lot more prevalent and a lot more people are doing it and I've said before you know I've taught my kids that no matter what taking your own life is not an option it's never never an option um, come to me come to your dad come to a friend like go to somebody pray to God you know do something um, rather than take your own life um, I know bullying is a real big thing that is leading to suicide so I'm gonna kind of touch on bullying as well and so let's get started um, the first thing I have for you is um, a little bit of scripture, and um, it inspired me. It's um, the song "Breathe" by um, Johnny Diaz. I've talked to that, talked to you about that before. That song has really, really inspired me. When things are going tough, when I feel like I'm pull, being pulled 50 million um, directions at once, this is a good song. It says, "Just calm down, just breathe, and let me take over." So here we go. Breathe. You're going to be okay. Breathe and remember you've been through this place before. You have been this uncomfortable and anxious and scared. And you survived. Breathe. You know you can survive this too. These feelings cannot break you. They are painful and debilitating. But you can sit with them and eventually they will pass. Maybe not immediately, but sometime soon they are going to fade. And when they do... You will look back at this moment and laugh for having doubted your resilience. I know it feels unbearable now, but just keep breathing. Again and again, this will pass, I promise. It will pass. I got that off of Pinterest and it's by Daniel Kepke. Um, and then I also got this, um, of course everything I get off um, is, is mainly from Pinterest. Um, it says, God is a way maker. Just know that the God you serve is a way maker. He will make a way to get it done. Fix it, shift it, turn it. Even when there doesn't seem to be a way, get into agreement with God tonight. There is. You are going to serve him, maintain faith in him, and wait on him because his blessings are always worth the wait. And he is always right on time. That is very powerful. And in watching... Um, Pastor Stephen, um, one of the videos that I just got through watching, um, he was doing a series on being anxious and your mind, which I'm, I'm anxious about everything. You know, I'm a worry wart and, you know, I'm trying to work on that. Um, but he entitled one, The Movie Inside Your Head. And I've talked to you all about when you get in an argument with somebody, you kind of play that movie inside your head. Well, it's not just arguments that we do that with. It's everything. And he was talking about the, the story about uh, Martha and Mary and how um, Martha opened her, her home to Jesus, and there's a Martha and Mary in all of us, and we just gotta channel both of them, kind of. You know, Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to his every word. Martha, who invited Jesus over for a meal, is in the kitchen, she's cleaning, she wants everything to be perfect, she wants this meal to be perfect, she wants this and that, and nobody's helping her. And I get like this a lot, like I'm like running around doing all the all the work at the house and everybody's just sitting there and, and I get frustrated and I'm like, oh, you need to help me. <clears throat> well, that's what Martha did. She went to Jesus and she said, Jesus, do you not care? Look, can you please tell Mary to help me? Look, look what I'm doing for you and nobody's helping me. And he cares 
for her more than she does herself. And at that moment, it's hard for her to see that because she's just thinking about this is the movie and the script that I had in my mind of he's going to come in, we're going to sit here, the pots are here, the pans are there, the, the fish is here, this is, and, and, and nothing's going according to plan. Well, I've said before in the past, I'm a very organized, planned person, but after my first child came three months early, I think that's when I woke up and realized nothing is going to go according to my plan because uh, I'm not in control of God is. So you just got to roll the punches and go with it, right? So <clears throat> what he was telling her was, Martha, Martha, calm down. You are worried about so many things, but only one thing is important. Not saying that... What she was doing is not important because they needed to eat, right? She wanted her house to be clean for Jesus and she needed to prepare anything. But she was like getting so stressed out and worrying about all this kind of stuff when all she really needed to be doing was taking that moment to be with Jesus. And in our lives, we can translate that as, you know, there's several times where my husband has even had to point it out to me where, you know, in the evening I'm running around and I'm picking up clothes and I'm wash, washing the, the countertops and I'm doing this and I'm picking up toys and I'm doing that and everybody's sitting down in the living room and I'm the only one that's doing stuff and where's my focus? Okay, yes, stuff needs to be washed, stuff needs to be picked up, countertops need to be wiped down, but does it need to be in this very moment? No, that's what Jesus was saying is you're worried about so much, but Mary, there's only one thing that's important and I'm not going to take that away from her. And that's what Mary was doing, sitting with Jesus. Okay, so don't let our lives get so consumed with stuff that it takes away our time with God. And don't let our lives get so consumed with stuff that at the end of the day, you say, did I even spend five minutes with my family or my kids, you know? I'm not perfect like I said I'm guilty of this like all the time so I'm trying to work on it so um, also he was talking about um, we seem to think that we're in control and we seem to think well it's our life right so we're the director of our script well in all reality God's trying to say I'm in the director's seat you have a script you think certain things are going to play out, but I have something much better. So if you would sit down and let me be in the director chair, meaning God, and let him direct it, he already knows the ending. And it's far better than we could have ever wrote the script. And it's far better than we can have ever imagined. Okay, so I'll get off my soapbox on that and cut to the stories because they're really good. Okay, <clears throat> so the first story I have for you, is it's, it's kind of funny, but it it's funny, but it's not. A father is passing by his son's bedroom, was astonished to see that the bed was nicely made and everything was picked up. Then he saw an envelope. Propped up on the pillow, it was addressed, Dad. With the worst premonition, he opened the envelope and read the letter with trembling hands. Dear Dad, it was with great regret and sorrow that I'm writing you. I had to elope with my new girlfriend because I wanted to avoid a scene with you and Mom. I've been finding real passion with Stacy, and it is so nice, but I know that you wouldn't approve of her because of her piercings, tattoos, and her tight motorcycle clothes, and she is much older than I am. It is not only the passion, Dad, she's pregnant. Stacy said that we will be very happy. She owns a trailer in the woods and has a stack of firewood for the whole winter. We, will share, we share a dream of having many, many more children. Stacy has opened my eyes to the fact that marijuana doesn't hurt anyone and so we will be growing it for ourselves and trading it with other people in in the commune for all the cocaine and ecstasy that we want in the meantime we will pray for someone to find a cure for aids so stacy can get better she so deserves it don't worry dad i'm 15 and i know how to take care of myself Someday, I'm sure that we'll be back to visit so you can know your many, many grandchildren. Love your son, Joshua. Okay, reading this, I would be like, fall into the floor, right? Hang on. P.S. Dad, none of that is true. I am over at Jason's house. I just wanted to remind you that there are worse things in life than a school report card on the kitchen table. Call me when it's safe to come home. It's funny, but it's not, it's funny, but it's true. Like, 
we tell our kids, you can tell us anything. And I've told my kids, you can tell me anything. Even if it's going to hurt my feelings, don't be disrespectful. But even if you feel it's going to hurt my feelings or um, embarrass me or whatever, like I want you to be able to come and tell me anything. Okay. And so I think in this story, it was kind of funny because the son had a bad report card and was nervous. You know, my mom and dad are going to kill me for these grades and blah, blah, blah. So he made up this big story of this is what could, it could happen. So then the, maybe the blow of the grades won't be so hard. So funny, but true. You know, um, like I said, I always tell my children, I don't care. You can come and tell me anything. You know, um, I may get upset, but just come and talk to me. And this also has to do with the other stories that have to deal with bullying and suicide. You know, I've told my kids, no matter what the issue is, I want you to come and talk to me because if you don't talk to me and you bottle it all up inside, then that's what happens is people just take their own life because they feel like they can't talk to anybody. So um, in my house, I said, I, I don't ever want that to happen. So, okay, that was the first story. Now, sorry, I have all these marked, but they're kind of scattered. So, okay, next story. This has a little bit to do with um, judgment and racism. So I'm a white Caucasian female, but I am fluent in Mandarin, Chinese, and English. Now looking at me, you would not know that I can speak Mandarin, which is why I find it hysterical to mess with people when they come through my line speaking Chinese, so I can understand every word they're saying. The other day, a Chinese couple came through my line. I asked them in English, all the questions about the bags and the rewards cards and all the stuff. Anyway, I was starting to ring up their stuff and the wife said to her husband, tell her not to bruise the bananas. She spoke it in Chinese and I didn't say anything. The wife said, tell that stupid girl to go faster in Mandarin. I smiled and pretended I had no idea what she was saying. She kept, she kept coming, commenting on how my hair looked like a boy and how her grandma would be doing the job so much faster than I, all in Chinese. Then she said, make sure she doesn't forget the water in Chinese. And I replied in English, I won't forget the water. As I watched with enjoyment at, at the girl with the look of terror spread across her face, she realized I understood everything she was saying before. She just stood there with her mouth open and her husband said in Chinese, this is why you shouldn't trash talk employees right in front of them. And I replied in English, he's right. They paid, the husband apologized and they walked out while we we're all laughing so hard. I would take this a step further to say, don't trash talk anyone. Okay, I like this story because it's, it's true. It happens all the time. Okay. And it's not just, I mean, it's all languages. Okay. So even people that don't speak English and people that do speak English, they'll talk to each other in English and bad mouth the people that don't speak English. I know there's several times I'll be at the store and I'll hear people behind me talking in Spanish. Um, they're probably talking about me and I'm like, okay, you know, or when you go get your nails done or whatever and you know the people that are talking Chinese, I, I know, I know for a hundred percent guarantee that when me and my niece are sitting there getting our, our toes and, and nails done, that they're sitting there, they're laughing and they're talking about us and you know, they're looking, making their comments or whatever. Um, so it happens all the time and my advice is not only don't trash talk people in front of them, but let's just stop the trash talk altogether. And maybe there would be a lot less bullying and a lot less anger and anxiety and pressure of feeling like you have to be so perfect because people are making fun of you over here. So, okay, next story. This is, re this is really cool. I noticed that my boyfriend would always wave to everyone while we were driving around. No matter who it was, he would flash a smile and wave happily even if they gave him weird look, looks and didn't wave back. I asked him, why do you wave to strangers like that? And he said, I heard about some people who had tried but failed to commit suicide. Many of them said if a stranger would have just acknowledged them with a smile or a wave, they wouldn't have ended their life. Today, I would like to save a life. That is very powerful and it's very true. I've told y'all several times, 
a smile is worth a thousand words. You know, if you smile at somebody, ask them about their day, compliment somebody. You don't know their story. You don't know if right after you see them, they're planning to go shoot themselves or whatever their issue is. And what if, how, how wonderful would it be if your smile or your pat on the back or your compliment saved their life? Wouldn't that be awesome? Okay, let's see. Now this gets into bullying and then we'll end with the suicide. Um, today I got detention for standing up for what I believe in. Oh, sorry, this is not about bullying, this is about negativity. Um, the teacher said, write down three things you dislike about yourself. The girl, she just sits there. The teacher says, Ciara, why aren't you writing? She says, I can't do this. I will take a zero, sorry. The teacher says, why? Ciara says, because I refuse to promote self-hate. Because some people in the world can fill out 20 of these pages front and back, no spaces. And this could trigger something in someone. The teacher says, Ciara, you have to do it or I'm going to send you to the office. Ciara says, okay. She gets up and she walks to the office. I, I feel this is very powerful. She is standing up for positivity. She's refusing to do the assignment of, I mean, what teacher in their right mind would say, write three things you don't like about yourself? Oh my goodness, there's so much negativity in this world as it is. Why not say, write three things that you like about yourself or that you like about a person in this room? Okay, let's be positive. Let's build each other up, not tear each other down. Like Sierra said, no, there's people that can fill 20 pages of these front and back no spaces and that's going to trigger on them. And then at the end of the day, they might go home and kill yourself. And then what's the teacher going to feel like, oh, dude, hmm, they kill themselves. Maybe it was that assignment I gave them class. You know, makes no sense. Okay, so, sorry. La, 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 la. Almost done, I promise. Two more. Okay. I picked up my niece from school today because she got suspended. I asked the principal what happened, and she said she was talking about something she shouldn't even know about, and it was wrong for her to know. You should be ashamed of yourself for teaching her that kind of stuff. But he didn't say what she said. So when I dropped her off at the house, I asked her what happened, and she said my friend was being bullied at school, and I stood up in front of everyone. I can't remember what I said, but you would have been proud. After that, I went back to the school and asked one of the teachers what she said, and she replied back that the girl said, this is what my aunt told me. If you look at it properly, hangman teaches you that by saying the wrong things, you can end someone's life. If you say the wrong letters in hangman, the man is hung, which means the game is over. That is the same in real life. Some hang themselves, some shoot themselves, overdose, cut too deep, or even jump off of high places. The majority of suicide victims are bullied victims. When you bully someone, your words stick to them like glue. Each word every day. Soon they start to believe the words and they can't take it anymore and they end their lives. Your niece was suspended for standing up against the bullying for talking about suicide and the principal told you you should be ashamed that you taught her that? What the, dot, 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 dot. I won't repeat that one. So I thought this was very powerful. Again, somebody standing up for their beliefs. I believe that we need more people like this. We need more people to stand up and stop the bullying and stop the negativity and, and, and stop the, the fighting and stop the racism and stop just everything. Just Let's lift people up. You know, yes, this girl got suspended and that sucks. And I'm sure that the parents are going to get involved and they're going to go to the board and fight it. I know I would. I'd be like, no, 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 no. My daughter did the right thing, whatever. But this was awesome. That's why I want to share this story with you because it was awesome. You know, she noticed somebody, whether it was a friend or not a friend, being bullied in school. And she was just like, no, 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 no. You should not be doing that. And, you know, getting suspended, that's ridiculous. But. The last story I want to share with you, um, it's kind of like a letter to bullies, and this is what I wanted to end with because it, it is very powerful. It's about judgment, and I've said before, you don't know people's stories. So before you go and make fun of somebody or judge, some, judge somebody, you really need to know about them and know who they are as a person. So it says, Dear Bullies, 
See that 15-year-old girl holding hands with her one-year-old son that you called a slut? She was raped at 13. You see that baby boy crying that you made fun of for being a crybaby? His best friend committed suicide last night. You see that girl you made fun of for having all those bruises? She is abused every day by her parents. You see that bald woman you made fun of? She's dying of breast, can breast cancer. You see that old man you called ugly? He had a serious injury on his face in the war. You see that man you made fun of for having all those burns? He ran into a burning hospital to save his dead daughter. You see that girl you called fat? She starves herself every day. You see that boy you called stupid? He has Down syndrome. I wanted to end with this today on a serious note of, again, you don't know people's stories. You know, I know that people see me and they judge me for certain things. You know, I'm guilty too. There's people that I've looked at and I'm, I judge them a book by its cover. Um, we've all done it. We're all human. But this is very powerful because you don't know these people's stories. That girl that you're calling loose in a slut, okay, she may be loose in a slut. That's not, that's not, that's not your job to, to, to say. But here she wasn't. She was raped. And she decided not to abort that child and to keep that child and love that child. And you're judging her? The kid that you see crying, his best friend just killed himself. You're making fun of him? What if he goes home and kills himself? I tell my, I tell my kids all the time, you know, because they'll come home and they'll say, oh, guess what happened at school? Or so-and-so said that this, they were this at school or they were that at school or this happened at school. And I always say, do not judge them and do not make fun of them because you don't know the whole story. You just know what you see. And there's pieces to the puzzle that are missing that can maybe explain things. Again, it could be what you're saying. It could not be. But that's, it's, we are not meant to judge. And it also says, um, Pastor Stephen was talking about, you know, what we judge people on, karma in turn gets judged on us. So how would you like to be judged on certain things that people don't know anything about and they get the wrong idea? It doesn't feel good. So um, I'm trying to be uplifting, not trying to end it on a sad note, but just trying to let y'all know that it starts with you. The, the positivity and the change in the world I have on my, um, I think it's my, I don't know if it's my Twitter or something. Anyways, I have on one, one thing on um, my thing. It says, be the change that you wish to see in the world. And I think that's important. Change starts with you. And other people see how you are and how you act and how you treat people and the things that you do. And it's like a domino effect. So instead of all this evil and negativity and suicide and bullying and hatred and strife and anger and depression and hostility, why don't we uplift people? And why don't we love people and, and be confident and be, be sweet and caring and helpful? So that's what I wanted to share with y'all today, and I hope that y'all have the rest of the great week and enjoy y'all's weekend, and until next week, stay safe.